Tristan here, and uh, I am going to be showing you a, an invention um, inspired by two awesome gamers, White Light and Jazza. Uh, although I started on the uh, opening screen because I like this little blurb. It is better, and I've never played it. So um, let me demonstrate to you the uh, invention that they inspired. I'll link it in the sidebar. Uh, they uh, built, they may not have been the first to create, but they built a, a rail system where you press the button and it came and you press the button and it returned. Uh, I, their, their biggest problem was that you could only limit it to five and the uh, addition of new carts was, uh, would linearly expand their invention because of all the redstone involved. Uh, however, the difference with mine and theirs is I actually use um, binary, and that's probably nothing new. But the other thing is that I actually have multiple carts per storage area, and they cycle around, and depending on the input, it sends you the right cart. So here I have set up a one storage unit with four carts on it, and there are two um, storage carts, one that's in the system, and one that's in the receptacle for accessing, and it's all above ground so you can see everything, and I'll describe it after I demonstrate it's working. Uh, okay, so there are two switches here to give you all four different options. Um, you know, being binary null, it's two to the second, which is four. And then there's the request button, and this light tells you when you can press the request button and not incur error. So I'm going to press the button here, and I'll describe what's going on. And I broke the button. <laughs> wow, I'm such a noob. <sighs> Alright, press the button, turns on the request, the request gets sent to this multiple XOR latch, uh, the carts are counted as they go past binarily, then the input is compared with the output, and then once it, well, it's already actually worked, but uh, I'll just talk about this while I'm doing it anyway. So the cart comes up, it counts, the binary is counted, the binary is compared to the input, and if it is not the right cart, it pushes it back into the cycle, and if it is the right cart, it lets it pass. Uh, once it comes out, it goes down to this bottom track, comes around here, and this is just a, a swapper that that uh, makes sure that you only have one card in the receptacle. So in this cart we have coal, and when I request it, the last time I pressed it, it actually pressed right as the right card came up. So I'll just demonstrate what's happening. So up here, if we get the right cart, it should let it pass. And that's just the swapper, and then this one gets sent back into the system. Now, the purpose of swapping is so that you can swap cards between positions on a single container and between multiple containers once I get there. Once I get to the demonstration, because I've got a much bigger one right behind me. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about what's happening. The request button stays on until the cart is returned, and when the cart is returned, it uh, pushes it back onto the loop and sends a signal telling it to turn off the request. While the cards are cycling around the request, they press a button, right here, which goes up to the top of the counter. The counter is binary, so it just sends a signal downward, and, and this is entirely extendable, and it is um, uh, logarithmic with uh, its extension, so you can actually have multiple la levels, and it's only logarithmic expansion instead of uh, linear. Um, so what happens here is the signal is delayed from the button press, uh, because the XOR um, chain latch system here, uh, it, it takes a while because it's just the way delays work, and oh my goodness, I, I don't really like delays on uh, diodes, but whatever. I dealt with it. Uh, and so what happens here is if the signal is correct, and from if all the inputs and output, the input and the count of the cart is exactly the same, the latch lights up, and this piston extends backwards and lets the one that's always extended de retract and then sends it back. And then the cart that sent swapped with the one you're asking for. Oh, let me demonstrate that it is swapped. <laughs> I don't know how to make recordings. So this one's full of diamonds, the other one's full of coal. And I haven't actually changed these yet, but I'll demonstrate that here in a moment. So. 
counts that cart, it's not correct. Counts that cart, it's not correct. It counts that cart. And let's go. Do, 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 do. And this one comes back. So this one is filled with coal. So I'm, I'm probably not a really good demonstrator, and I probably haven't explained anything, and I have absolutely no idea how to get these maps on here. I was just making this a video response to, uh, to awesome gamers and their invention. I know there are videos like several months old, but I only saw it recently. So that is the uh, smallest one that I've built for this demonstration. It has four carts and three inputs. Uh, the actual number of the cart and then the request button. Over here I've actually um, extended it so there are five inputs and a request button and with five inputs it's two to the third, two to the fifth which is 32 but uh, 32 carts but I only have uh, four receptacles and I should probably get them all loaded first. Four receptacles with four carts each so there's only 16 carts but uh, it, it's totally extendable I just it takes a long time to build the intricate stuff, and I don't know how to get uh, my, my, uh, Minecraft edit to actually copy and paste large segments that are... I, I just don't know how to. I'm such a noob. Anyway. So... I'm going to actually demonstrate to you the... Um, the fact that you can request a different card first, because I, I didn't do that over here. I, I really should have had the script or something. So I changed the, uh, the request so that it's not the same as it was, and then I request. So it should not give me the other uh, the other container card. It should give me one of the empty ones right now. So it gives me the empty ones, and it gets swapped. So you can, you can request any card, and you can swap between the current one and any one in the system. This includes over multiple... Uh, receptacles, but that's only because uh, I made this so that you would, your interface would uh, be kind of uniform regardless of the size of the receptacles, how many it holds, and how many receptacles there are, as long as they remain um, congruent, as long as they are, as long as they hold the same number, it should all be fine. If you have one that holds two and have one that holds eight, there are going to be error conditions, but I'm not really going to go into that. I'm, I'm just suggesting that if you do design something like this with this system, once I figure out how to put this on a downloadable map or something like that. Anyway, so with this system, I don't have the request but the uh, the request light, but it's still the same thing. So I'm gonna just request some cart. Actually, I think this middle one, since I only have 16, doesn't actually matter. So anyway, so I'm requesting the first cart from the first from the second track, I think. So let's go see what happens. It should be this one. Yep, and it comes out, and it swaps it. And this one goes back to the correct one. And put it in, and it returns the signal, turning off the request, so there's still four in all, everything one, and one in the receptacle. So uh, systems like this can always hold um, any power of two plus one, because there's one in the receptacle and there's always a power of two and everything else. Um, I have been working on trying to get it so that it is not always a power of two. Uh, even the, the biggest the biggest the hurdle for that is that since these, this, this counting of binaries is so simple, trying to get a, 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 an encrypted or a non-binary one is a little bit more challenging because this is quite compact. But um, I don't actually have any container cards on any of this. Uh, but I can break this one and demonstrate to you that it is swapping just the same and that you can swap between different receptacles. There we go. Oh, yep. one thing about the cart system is that if any enemy, if any of the uh, monsters get on it or or anything, any of the pieces fall like onto the cart track, the carts will just stop, which is which is, bon which is bonkers. So I'm going to request a different cart. This one should be on the third, or the second one, because it's in binary, it's zero to two, so it's really the third one. So, over here, should send out one of these here, Whoop. did I miss it? And there it goes, so it's on the third one, and I'm probably not doing a very good explanation of this, I'm much more of a abstract thinker than an actual, like, talker, and I didn't have this scripted, so, whatever. I'm pretty sure that they'll both understand what's going on here. 
counts in binary, it compares the binary number of the card to the request number, and if it is the same, it, it sends it out. So, uh, this one's also... Just swap this. Oh! Should have all these pieces out ready, huh? I keep breaking my own stuff. So, different cart number, different track number, both off. So, uh, that should be the first receptacle. So... Not the right cart. The right cart. Right cart. And then it swaps it. So I have a. Uh, I've, I've requ I, I swapped a cart with the first one, with the and with the second one, and uh, just depending on the combination of flips and switches that you've got here, it, you can request any cart from any receptacle that you have attached, as long as you have your receptacles then. Um, you know, the, the max limit. Because so, if you have multiple receptacles with the same ID on them, it will return multiple. Uh, so up here is the uh, on the XOR chain. I'm probably going to redo all of this. On the XOR chain, there's the binary, which counts the cards, and then down here is the actual ID of the uh, receptacles. Um, so this block would be here if it was uh, zero, and uh, there if it's zero, and here if it's one. And See, so this is receptacle 1, that, that one's receptacle 0, that one's receptacle 1, this one's receptacle 2, and this one's receptacle 3. So there are four receptacles from 0 to 3. Binary. I was going to build larger ones, but this took way so long, and it's, and it's good enough to demonstrate that you can have multiple uh, receptacles on each one. So it's when you do extend it, it is logarithmic, you add one more layer, and it doubles the capacity. That's all it does. So this could hold 32 cards, but it only holds 16, so it's less than the max, and so, yay. Uh, the This is a little scrunched up here because I need, I thought I was going to need um, some more space over here for a, a different uh, redstone component, but I, I just streamlined that and kept this whole ma mashed up. What's happening here is uh, it, I'm using an XOR latch, then they're stacked, there's multiple, there's six XOR latches on top of each other, or, excuse me, five uh, XOR latches on top of each other, and then a, um, and then an AND, or then, excuse me, yeah, then an AND, uh, switch, an AND, uh, log, line, don't know, I'm not good with words, an AND chain in the middle, which determines whether this is extended or retracted. And whether this is extended or retracted determines whether it pushes or it lets it pass when the signal gets passed. So, the signal pushes. When it's retracted, the signal lets it pass. Also, if it's correct, it also uh, extends this one, which catches the return, and the return automatically pushes itself back in as long as it's there when it's pushed. Uh, this little thing here ensures that this button is pressed once and that it continues in back into the loop. But it presses this button once to tell the <coughs> the request uh, button to turn back off. So. And this is just a basic um, delay where it presses this, it caches it, it releases this one, and then it lets it go, and then it uh, retracts it and extends it, so it just catches one. It always catches one, and it makes sure that it only catches one. But there's probably something easier to do than that. I'm using a lot of uh, minecart exploits. For example, here, this is a uh, one-way rectifier. This will always make it. This will not allow the minecart to go back. It'll only go forward. Um, likewise, I'm using a piston exploit. This is. I I'm, I'm totally in a vanilla server here. I'm not using any mods or anything. So what's happening here is since the piston is above the track, but it still intersects with the uh, cart when it extends, it's able to push it into a different track. And this one is an alternative exploit where if the, there's a, a block uh, up and to the left or up and to the right of the, the extending like that, or of the diagonal like that, it'll catch it. Um, using the same exploits over here, I don't know if I'm using anything else. Uh, I don't think I'm using anything else. Well, uh, they'll probably give me some tips when I when they see this, or if they see this at all. So. 
See you later.